Assalamu alaikum everyone. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, another topic and Imran bhai is with us. How are you Imran bhai? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, how are you? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. So let's uh, watch another video of our brother Saeed from Oregon, USA who has a message to share with all of us. Let's see what he has to say. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum everybody. I'm making this video here uh, to address all of the Muslims uh, in America and Pakistan, especially, uh, but worldwide. This is for everybody. This is an urgent message. Okay, there's a man named Muhammad Qasim in Pakistan, been having true dreams from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, wherein uh, uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been speaking to him. Um, and he has been seeing dreams from the future, and I want to narrate one of them. In this dream, he had on uh, 3-1-2020. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I saw in this dream that after the assassination of the Iranian general, the Iranian government becomes very sad and enraged. It feels to me that Iran is being supported by some other Middle Eastern allies as well. Since their faces resembled the people of the Middle Eastern countries, all of these individuals vowed to take revenge together. Then I saw that two American fighter jets are flying in the sky and practicing some defense exercises. Suddenly, from another side, around four fighter jets fly in and surround one of the American fighter jets and immediately destroy it. I am close by to those fighter jets as I am witnessing all this. I said to myself, they have destroyed the fighter jet of the United States. And this is not good because they shouldn't have done this against a powerful country like America without proper strategy and planning. So Muslims are watching all this from the ground become very happy and start chanting slogans and celebration that we have destroyed the fighter jet of America. Then they also shoot down the second American fighter jet. And again, the people become very happy and start celebrating. The pilots also become very happy and say that we have reached to such a point where we have taken revenge from America. However, on the other hand, the rest of the Muslim world becomes very frightened that what has happened? Now America will take revenge and this is no ordinary thing. Then I found myself in the Middle East where I am assessing the situation and looking at people's houses. And I said to myself that at this moment, everything seems fine, but when America will attack, then all of this will be destroyed and people have to run away from there and chaos will spread everywhere. Hence, I decided to leave that place before any destruction happens and the dream ended there. Okay, so Imran Bhai, what do you have to say about this, uh, this, this dream particularly? Uh, well, this dream was about the Iranian general who was uh, assassinated by Americans and uh, in reaction, there was a big reaction from Iran's side, um, and then Mohammad Qasim saw in the dream that uh, one of the aircrafts of America was shot down by shot down by uh, Iranians, Iranian aircrafts. They surround him two or three aircraft. And Middle Eastern countries were with Iran on this, like they were conspiring. Yeah, yeah. some of the Middle Eastern countries they were uh, with Iran. They were siding with Iran. Uh, Against this. America. Against America, yes. But the overall message we get from this dream is that uh, we have to strategize, we have to uh, make proper strategy to fight the enemies. Plan ahead, you mean? Plan ahead, exactly. Because Qasim saw in the dream that uh, probably that move of the Iranians was in a haste and they shouldn't have done that uh, against such a big power if they uh, knew that. You know, well, everyone knows America is a big power and they can retaliate in a, a bad way for Iran and others as well. And it, it can be, uh, they can inflict losses upon themselves, you know. Mm. Um, uh, they're already being uh, cornered in terms of financial uh, restrictions. So it doesn't mean that you should, you know, agree to that power. It's just mean, yeah. It just means that it should be proper planning and strategy. Yeah, and then to... respond or retaliate, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then secondly, uh, we see that uh, basically the lesson from the dream is that how we can prepare. Because all these wars from all these countries, um, when, when they fight and any retaliation from the Muslim countries will be uh, just uh, for that uh, particular short time, period of time. To become victorious against your enemies, you'll have to have the uh, same kind of uh, 
military power, same kind of technology, same kind of aircrafts, and then you can defeat them. At the moment, we all know that even if there will be a war in Middle East, uh, there'll be just retaliation from the Middle Eastern countries, and it won't be for the sake of winning the war, it'll be just to defend themselves. So what can we do in, in, in light of Ahmed Qasim dreams that will help us achieve that, uh, that goal of, you know, having, uh, having proper defense against, against uh, you know, the yeah. <clears throat> retaliatory powers? Yeah, so uh, to overcome those powers, we will have to make a proper army. First of all, we'll have to improve the standards of the army, uh, give them proper food and facilities, and also increase the number of the army. Because, um, as you know, when uh, Prophet Sallallahu yes. said in the Hadith that when you see that army or when you see uh, uh, Khalifatullah al-Mahdi coming from the side of Khorasan, go join that army, even if you have to crawl over ice. So it means lots of Muslims from all around the world, they will go to Pakistan and they will become part of the army as well. And they will use their own uh, wisdom and all uh, their okay. skills to strengthen the Ummah and in particular Pakistan and Pakistani forces and we also have to abolish this culture of uh, elitism the elite culture we have uh, in Pakistan army where generals are sitting in the air-conditioned rooms only and the soldiers dying on the ground so that's what we have to uh, eliminate or abolish as well so the generals are the first one in front rows mm. to fight the enemies and there also there's also corruption and things like that also isn't it Down. yeah there is corruption everywhere in pakistan so that will have to be abolished obviously once army chief gets witness from prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that qasim is not lying and his dreams are true after that uh, there will be such system which will uh, hold everyone accountable basically mm. so once everyone is held accountable and they will have to answer um the, the the state for their doings then they will become you know uh, the corruption will end corruption okay. will end inshallah inshallah so uh, okay another aspect you know Imran Bhai that I that he mentioned was towards the end of the dream Muhammad Qasim is assessing the situation in the Middle East and he says that um, he says that right now the situation is, is okay but uh, soon you know when America will reta retaliate then there'll be chaos and people, you know, it'll be, it'll be a big chaos that's going to spread in the Middle East. So are we already seeing chaos in the Middle East, aren't we? Like there's yeah. in Yemen, in Syria and, you know, Palestine, etc. So what sort of chaos is, is, is referring, is being referred to here? So chaos, obviously, whenever the war starts, there is chaos everywhere. Um, and in this case, when in Middle East, the war starts, and uh, the most, they, they fi start fighting with each other, there's a chaos already. People, even if on the borders, there's sometimes tension between two countries, mm -hmm. the people from the border area, area start moving and migrating towards the safe places. Mm -hmm. And here you're talking about the whole states, the whole country fighting another country, mm -hmm. and m many countries, very uh, multiple number of countries being involved in that war. So and which countries? In particular, is there any reference to that uh, will be ensued in this case? Because so far we know that Saudi Arabia is relatively safe uh, or peaceful, uh, and you know UAE is relatively safe, Kuwait, Qatar. These are uh, relatively wealthier countries in the Middle East. So, is could there be a chance that there's going to there's going to be wars inside these countries? Yes, there will be because what the enemies will do after they bring down Turkey they will target Saudi Arabia and they will create a uh, civil war within Saudi Arabia. I think uh, th this Prince Talal and MBS uh, could be fighting each other. Allah knows Allah best. Allah. Mm -hmm. There could be other princes who can jump in as well. Mm -hmm. So when they start fighting for the rule and uh, for the government, for the kingship, then there will be a lot of chaos inside the countries already. And this will destabilize the country and this will give the chance the, to the external forces to, um, to come in and jump in and jump uh, in, yeah. bring boots on ground, for example. Because yeah. I know we know that in the Middle East, uh, a big proportion of the, those countries, uh, the Gulf countries are migrants, you know, from Pakistan, India and other places. Yeah. 
So if they're go it's going to be war, they're going to all going to run away. They're going to go back to their uh, countries or maybe, you know, be stuck there. I don't know how it's going to turn yes, out. Yes, th there was a dream of Muhammad Qasim as well, where he saw that he helps some people to uh, get out of a chaotic area and go to the uh, small house he sees, mm -hmm. which I believe is like Pakistan. He will help people to come from Middle East to Pakistan and start living there. Um, so yeah, lots of people will start leaving their, uh, their places, their lands and migrate to Pakistan. And you see Pakistan has land, vast amount of land. Just take Balochistan for example. It's empty. So it's it's empty, empty, yeah. So that will be utilized. And then as we said, the after we <coughs> eliminate and abolish it, there will be abundance of treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, resources oil, gas, electricity, everything will be in abundance. Inshallah, there will inshallah. be no um, shortage of anything. So then we will be able to accommodate these people mm. and we will improve improve their life standards. They will also take part and play their role in the uh, rebuilding and uh, rise of Islam. And once uh, that happens, then inshallah everyone will see as well. That's good. So, uh, okay, that <coughs> that's very... I, you know, it, it looks something that there's gonna be so many things happening in the near future you know it's just mind-boggling some when you think yeah. about it there's gonna be so many ups and downs and may allah help us all yeah. uh, so what about the uh, for example i know there was um a dream which in is, is indicates that we that pakistan should increase its army the quantity of the army as well number of the number of, of the troops, of the troops. Yeah. um so is it gonna be like you know? Should we should should Muslim countries generally increase their armies uh, in terms of the quantity? Uh, have you know make everyone be of fighting of able to fight or use weapons to defend themselves? Is it is that what's uh, what can be implied from this or? Um, I don't know about the Muslim countries, but in case of Pakistan, definitely because. As far as I know, some of the uh, guns they use, uh, they are heavy for the soldiers to lift because they, they don't have that much, you know, uh, power as well. The soldiers are, yeah. obviously, they don't get food like the Western uh, forces, the people from the Western armies, they get. And mm. they're more stronger, healthier in terms of physical health, even though Allah helps our army as well in many different ways. And when the time comes, then even a small person can inflict lots of losses on the enemy. But it's just, you have to prepare as well. You have to prepare your army, make sure they are very good in health and they are strong enough physically. And they have given all yeah, the facilities, resources, food, all the things they need. And uh, then numbers enough so they yeah. can patrol the area or they can basically uh, and also the, cover the area, most of the areas on the borders. The fuel as well, because uh, there's also a dream about Muhammad Qasim that uh, Pakistan army, the fuel is finished. Yeah. And, and they're not able to mobilize. Actually, no, that, that dream was like um, that enemy mixes some poison in the food of Pakistan army. And uh, that food later on in a dream was told to Muhammad Qasim that that food is fuel and dollars because business in, is done in dollars on international level so that's what has been corrupted if you see mm. over the past few years today we don't have dollar reserves we uh, are struggling to get fuel from the uh, selling countries whoever is selling fuel mm. uh, sometimes there's shortage of fuel electricity and many other things so th that's what is happening now mm. you can see yes yeah, subhanallah subhanallah May Allah allow us to uh, prepare ourselves and the Ummah and uh, abolish shirk first of all uh, so that we can we can uh, attain the pleasure of Allah and Allah can help us um, against against the enemies of Islam and protect us. So Jazakallah Khair for listening again and uh, we'll see you next time inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum